This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. In this video, we'll be discussing independent back mount doubles recreational diving in Cozumel. During a week and a half period in Cozumel, I was able to make 18 boat dives and 10 shore dives using independent back mount doubles. For these dives, I used Scuba Club Cozumel, which is just south of the main downtown area. For independent backbound divers, this dive shop represents a worst case scenario. The dive shop does not have any manifolded doubles, and they do not have left-right modular valves. While the shop does have some DIN valves, I elected to use plain old right-hand K valves. One of the really nice things about Scuba Club Cozumel is the free afternoon shore diving. If you have a dive package, you are free to do unlimited shore diving uh, in the afternoon. Uh, this is um, what the setup for shore diving looks like. And uh, the diving well that you previously saw was uh, one of the many different ways of entering the water uh, at Scuba Club Cozumel. This is the area over here, particularly under the uh, pier, uh, where you can dive and see squid, octopus, and many other fish. To shore dive, you pick your tanks up at the dive shop and carry them over to the shore diving area. In this video clip, I'm going to demonstrate the assembly of the independent back mount double system. Uh, the method that I'm going to use today uh, for this clip is going to be the same method that I actually use uh, on the boat. Uh, when I do the boat, I assemble the rig on the engine box on a flat surface because uh, it would be unsafe to uh, assemble the gear with the tanks vertically. So uh, I'm going to uh, demonstrate that here today. Of course, you could also uh, assemble your gear vertically uh, and um, you could do that on the shore, but uh, would probably be uh, cause problems doing it on the boat. All right, so I've got my two tanks here, and um, I've done uh, another modification uh, from the uh, independent back mount, uh, uh, independent doubles back mount uh, video. I have changed the position of the two piece tank band with the one piece tank band. And I did that based upon um, uh, the dives I've been doing this week. So uh, when I'm assembling the gear, uh, what I found out was you have to struggle less uh, with the rig uh, if you just uh, have the, the top band uh, be the one that's the one piece band. And it makes it much easier. Uh, you don't have to push the tank in as far. Uh, so at this point, I can, uh, I can close my tank bands and I can uh, get ready for the second tank. Okay, so the right-hand tank uh, is the one that I've generally been using uh, facing uh, the normal direction. And the left-hand tank is going to be installed in the rig, 180 out, 180 out from its normal position. All right, so I've got the two tanks in here now. And when you use this method, it's actually a two-step process. You have to assemble the tanks uh, initially. And then what you have to do is uh, you have to raise it up. You have to raise the rig up like that. And uh, if you don't have it 100% uh, correct, uh, you have the opportunity uh, to adjust it. All right, so I need to change the angle here. So you have to raise it up uh, if you didn't do it perfectly. And uh, you could do two things at this point. You can release the tank band to make sure the tanks are uh, square. And uh, this also gives you the opportunity to 
to adjust the tank slightly in case you don't have the valves rotated uh, exactly squarely. Okay, so that's two things that you can do when you raise it up. Okay, so one of the things that you'll notice in the video is that these particular valves, this one is pretty much straight, whereas this one is at a significant angle. So when I put the regulators on, and you'll see this, uh, one of the regulators might be pointed off up in a little bit of a slightly off-center direction. The important thing is that the valves are 90 degrees to the tank, to your rig, so that uh, you are able to manipulate the valves without uh, any difficulty. Okay, so this is the first step, is assembling the tanks onto the rig. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two systems here that I'm going to use and I've got my left hand uh, tank here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that and this is the one is the one that people hate this is the one that is backwards and as you can see I've got a transmitter on the back here uh, on that uh, on my left post all right so here's my uh, left post this is my uh, redundant bladder Later hose. I'm not going to be using that. And then this is my uh, this is my necklace regulator right here. I'm going to put that there. And now I'm ready to do my right hand tank, which is facing in the uh, normal direction. So I'm going to screw that on. And you'll notice we're keeping with the uh, worst case uh, scenario here, where not only do we have um, regular right hand K valve tanks, but we have no DIN tank valves. The Scuba Club Cozumel does have um, uh, DIN, some limited DIN tank valves, but uh, for uh, our purposes here, rather than having to constantly go back and forth, uh, I am just going to uh, use uh, the standard K valves. Okay, so in this configuration, one thing I do do is I change my gauge, which is normally on the left post. I put that on the right post, and I take my transmitter, which is normally on the right post, and I put that on the left post. And the reason to do that, uh, as I discussed in one of the previous videos, is to simply make the rig more streamlined, not having poses pointing out uh, in uh, directions that apparently uh, some people find very offensive. All right, so here's my long hose. I'm not uh, diving immediately, so I'm going to be stowing my hose. And again, there was a video on that, taming the long hose, I think it was part two. And what I'm doing is I'm just gonna temporarily stow that here uh, until I'm ready to get into the water. All right, so um, that's the view from the back. Here's the view from the front uh, with, my, uh, with the rig. And uh, like I said, these are approximately 90 degrees out. And as you can see, this particular tank valve, the face of the tank valve is not 90 degrees to the handle. So it's pointed off in this uh, kind of strange direction, uh, which does not really affect the manipulation of the valve, which is the most important, uh, most important thing. All right, so that's it for this uh, video segment on assembling the gear for back mount independent doubles on shore. One of the things that I did do during the afternoon shore dives was to make a few uh, training films. Uh, in this particular video, I am demonstrating uh, a uh, valve drill. And of course, uh, this being Cozumel, there is current um, that was present during the filming. I will be releasing the training films uh, at a future date. I also did a number of uh, night shore dives uh, in independent back mount doubles. 
Uh, in this clip, um, we're watching Squid uh, Eat. Uh, I used a uh, Big Blue uh, VTL 8000 light uh, on the uh, lowest uh, light power setting. And I used that along with, um, as I did for all the underwater video, being uh, a GoPro 9 uh, with the excellent ISADA uh, video housing. There is an individual review of the ISADA housing uh, somewhere on the channel. For the independent background double boat dives, uh, I assembled the gear uh, on the actual boat itself. Uh, and the way they work is they have the uh, tanks on board the boat for you and you assemble the gear. Uh, one of the things that I found out was that um, the tanks uh, laying flat on the engine block like this uh, can uh, be prevented from uh, sliding if you put your fins underneath the tanks. On this boat, it was actually easier to do a back roll than to go to the end of the boat and do a giant stride. When doing a back roll with uh, doubles, independent or manifolded, uh, it's very important that you have the tanks well over the side of the gunnel of the boat. On one dive, my tanks were actually resting on the gunnel, and when I did the back roll, the back of my legs um, across from my shins actually struck the gunnel on the way down. So make sure that when you do a back roll with doubles, that you have the tanks extended well beyond the gunnel. The first big advantage to diving with independent back mount doubles is the ability to dive with two tanks when manifolded doubles are not available. Uh, a second big advantage uh, is the um, involving the setup process, uh, which it is much easier to handle uh, two individual aluminum 80s versus um, a set of uh, manifolded aluminum 80s uh, getting on and off of uh, the boat. The third advantage has to do with gas consumption. Since you are diving with two tanks, uh, it is uh, very possible for you to have a longer first dive of a two tank dive sequence uh, because you are using two tanks. What this means is that you can go further into your reserve than would be safe with a diver with only one single tank. I would typically breathe one tank down to approximately 1500 PSI and then breathe the other tank down to 2000 PSI on the first dive and then begin my ascent then. Uh, I would always, almost always uh, end up back on the boat with um, at least 1500 PSI in each tank. Uh, that enabled me to do a uh, second dive of uh, normal length without compromising safety. With independent back mount doubles, you do not need to switch between tanks in the same manner as with the side mount diving uh, in order to maintain uh, a balanced trim. This is because the tanks are closer to the center axes of your back in comparison to side mount tanks. Just make sure you maintain adequate gas for an out of gas situation. We were very fortunate with the weather on this trip and we were able to see most of the major types of sea life that you will typically find in Cozumel. What trip to Cozumel would be complete without seeing at least one splendid toadfish? This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. I hope this video was helpful and interesting. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.